Clemson Sports Talk each and every afternoon, 4 until 6 o'clock. You know what? I forgot that Clemson's uh, now back in person with their media availability. So uh, we will have we will have that audio for you tomorrow here on the show. And I mean, it's all I can do. I, f- I forgot. You know, they had a uh, incident and in, uh, with the media, and not a bad incident, but you know, COVID incident, I guess. And they were going to do things virtually, and I was still thinking that we were in the virtual uh, protocol, but we are not. We are back to doing it, doing it live and in person. So, again, talking about that. Da- uh, I don't know why you want to say Dabo Sweeney, Danny Ford and, and Vince Dooley. And their history, the matchups that they had, still, to me, just harkens back and, and hearing those old calls, whether it be Larry Munson, whether it be Brent Musburger. You know, that, to me, is the quintessential college, what, what college football always was. And I know when NIL was coming up this past summer and playoff expansion conversations and, and, and all of that, I kind of felt like the old guy for a little while. But I, I will say, I think we've all adjusted. Uh, because when this Clemson and Georgia game took place, it I mean, if you're being honest with yourself, it was bigger than what league you were playing in. Like, I I, I think that the whole mindset of your league and how valuable it is and and all that came more recently and really, I think, expanded once you got rid of these bowl tie-ins because when I think back to it, and I don't know if the television dollars were different, I don't know if it was the marketing of it, but your league, to me, back then was just an, an affiliation and not a thing you waved as a status symbol and and now it's really become more of a a status symbol for whatever reason and i i think a part of it is because it if, if you can create the myth that your league is better than everybody else's then you create a benefit of the doubt for your league Now, part of that has to come from performance on the field because you can't just go around thumping your chest and say it. you got to go out and do it, and the SEC has tended to do it better than anybody else in recent memory. Uh, But a lot of what the SEC's success has been in football, in fairness, over the past decade, has been Alabama. I mean, it's really been Alabama. Now, there have been some other good teams, but it's been about the Crimson Tide. And that, I that I believe, is something that that I think is forgotten by a lot of the people in the SEC because this league uh, has had a, a great run of success. But a majority of that success, when we're talking about at the top of the mark, has been the Crimson Tide. And in an era, or or what we may call the open era, before we had a BCS with a 1-2 matchup, and before we had a college football playoff with a 1-4 and a 3-2 matchup, or a 2-3 matchup, the open era where you could just end up playing anybody, you know, it might be tough to win the title because if you were number two in the country and you didn't get a shot at playing number one, then even on your best day, if number one won their game and you won your game, you still finished second. And I think that that kept people from being as rah-rah about their conference But now with playoff spots on the line, you want to rah-rah your league. You want your league to be seen as good because when you get a chance to stick two teams in, you want to have the advantage. As much as Clemson and Georgia next Saturday is about Clemson and Georgia and who they are as programs, 
much of our conversation has been about what does it say about that league? What would it mean for that league? And the ACC may be more so than the SEC, but even still. I mean, if Clemson goes into this game and just wallops Georgia, a team that most people think is going to challenge to be in the SEC championship, what does that say about the Bulldogs? If the if it's the reverse, what does that say about the Tigers in the ACC? I mean, maybe nothing. You could, because really, if you go back, you got to stand on your own accord individually. But for many many years, when these teams played off, when, when these teams faced off, it it really wasn't about the league. I I don't remember any of that being the thing. 803-4-500-86. One of the other interesting connections, I would say, too, between Clemson and Georgia in the 1980s with Danny Ford and Vince Dooley going head-to-head was the fact that Vince Dooley was from the state of Alabama, much like Danny Ford, except... Dooley went to Auburn, and Danny Ford went to Alabama. Vince Dooley, by the way, at age 88, currently listed as a consultant uh, with Kennesaw State. Again, Vince Dooley, 88. During his 25 years at Georgia, he was 201, 77, and 10. 201 wins, 77 losses. Danny Ford, during his tenure at Clemson, which was a shorter tenure, obviously, was 96, 29, and 4. And when you hear when you read those resumes, there is one thing that stands out substantially to me. Thank goodness we got rid of the tie. Holy cow, the tie. Awful. 1986, Clemson went 10-2-2. That's painful. Two ties in a single season? Ugh. We'll hit a break. Final segment next. I'm Mark Morial, President 